Hey guys, welcome back to the stuff. Uh, this week I am upcycling or doing a makeover on an old pine chest of drawers, and that looks a bit like this. So if you like the look of that, stick around. Remember, while this intro is on, drop me a like and subscribe to my channel. As always, we're going through the processes, uh, materials, that sort of thing. Uh, but I'm not going to do that in here. I'm actually going to pop over to my spare room because while my plaster's drying, it makes a good workshop. So I'm back in my spare room today, but I'm not looking after the plaster. I'm going to let that dry fully before I do any more work on it. So in the interim, uh, instead of getting on with anything else, I thought I'd do a bit more, something a bit more uh, fun that I've been meaning to do for a while, and that's renovate this set of chest of drawers. Um, this set of chest of drawers uh, I've had for probably around 20 years now and it's looking a bit dated and needs a bit of love. So I am going to be seeing if I can upcycle uh, this uh, chest of drawers. So uh, let's take a look at the condition. So starting with the top, um, it is got a few scratches on it, um, but generally not too bad to be honest considering how old it is. A um, few surface blemishes, some of the, some of the planks there have um, delaminated uh, over time. Um, and moving on to the drawers, they all look pretty good, the knobs look a bit dated. Uh, I've also got a bit of a uh, problem here with one of the drawers being a bit snapped, so I'll have to deal with that. And then the base um, also looks a little bit terrible, uh, or not terrible, is just a bit dated I think. So what I'm planning on doing um, with the chest of drawers is I'll give it a good uh, clean. I'm gonna knock the handles off um, so I can put some new ones on, which I'm gonna make in the shed later. Um, I'm also gonna take the base off um, and make myself a new one, a bit more of a modern uh, looking base. Um, I'll give everything a clean and a sand back, give the, uh, sort of top part of it a coat of paint and then I'll do something with the knobs and uh, the base. Um, but that's essentially what I'm going to be up to. So first job is to uh, get those handles off, get that base off and then make some repairs. So I've got a drawer to repair and a bit of top to repair. To get the handles off, I'm using a hammer. Um, these are glued in. Um, I tried using uh, a screwdriver just to prise them off, um, but that was causing a little bit of uh, damage and I didn't want to damage the drawer fronts any more than they already were. So gave them a little tap just to loosen the glue and they all came out. So I've taken all the handles off. Um, what I've got left is a hole in here which located this dowel on the handle um, and where they've drilled this out it's been drilled out with a force and a bit or something um, where it's gone all the way through the drawer so it's not actually that much material for me to um, screw any new handles on with um, I could try and make some that have got dowels on it but that's quite um, quite a job so actually what I'm going to do or what I've done is cut the spigot off of the handles that come out and I'm going to glue these bits back in um, and hopefully that'll provide some more meat to put the screw through. The glue I'm using is just some standard um, Gorilla wood glue. Uh, just putting a dab in the hole, sticking the uh, dowel in and just giving it a tap if it needs to just to make sure it's home. And I'll leave those to dry. Where there was a crack in the uh, drawer, I'm just sticking some more Gorilla glue in that join. Um, and using a bit of duct tape just to uh, act as a bit of a clamp uh, and hopefully that'll uh, you won't notice that once I've sanded it back. Once I've done the drawers um, I could just look uh, take the base off um, and that was just uh, held on with some panel pins so I just knocked that out with uh, a hammer and uh, and a screwdriver just to get those uh, away. Okay, so the chest drawers on its side now. I've just knocked off the base, and what I've been left with is this pretty sort of unfinished 
um, bit of pine on the bottom here. Um, you can see where the previous sort of like skirting board edging went up to, or sort of the, the previous base. Um, that goes all around the back, and then I've taken the bit off the front, which has just left this open gap. Now I'm going to be putting a um, new uh, base on this. So I think what I've decided to do is to chop off this existing base uh, at this point. So this frame, uh, the base, this sort of um, bottom frame will stay in position, um, but I'm just going to cut the rest of the bottom off just so I've got something uh, better to put my, um, put my base on. Once I'd uh, done all the glue, uh, let it dry, I gave everything a good wash. Um, I'm just using a uh, industrial degreaser uh, just to get any sort of dust, grime, dirt, that sort of stuff off it, because um, that'll help with uh, paint, uh, making the paint adhere later on. I made a few other small repairs uh, using some two-part wood filler. I forgot to film those bits, but um, just any sort of deep scratches and where that those two planks had delaminated on the top, uh, just filled those in with some wood filler and then gave everything uh, a sand over using some 120 uh, grit sandpaper. Not looking to take the old finish uh, off, uh, just sort of taking it back to provide a key for um, my um, primer. Once it's sanded, I uh, gave everything a wipe over with a damp cloth just to remove any dust, paying close attention to any sort of like crevices that dust might uh, stick in. Um, need to get rid of that so your paint sticks. And then I gave everything a once over using some Zinza Bin and I'm just using a uh, paint roller, uh, foam paint roller to do this. Uh, Zinza Bin is my go-to primer, sticks to anything, which is why I didn't really have to strip the old varnish off because um, it's a great product. While the primer dries, I can get the top coat prepared. Um, the paint I'm using is a Rust-Oleum uh, furniture paint in graphite gray. Um, and here I'm just uh, putting the paint through a viscosity funnel because I'm using a new sprayer that I bought uh, for 50 quid on Amazon. Uh, I'm gonna do a review on that at a later video, but just putting it through the viscosity funnel and I had to thin this with a bit of water, got it a little bit wrong on the first coat, which you'll see in a bit. Um, but yeah, that's what the paint I'm using. This is the first time I've used a paint spare, so um, I was not sure of what results I was getting, but I was just trying to keep the sprayer relatively um, even distance away from the surfaces and move in a sort of even pattern to try and get a good uh, coverage. Um, I can say that spraying is much easier than painting. Uh, in fact, spraying is great. So the first coat of spray paint on the uh, uh, drawer unit is now dry. Um, so let's take a look. Um, I have got some issues uh, on the top I've got a few blotches there and in this corner is pretty bad. I'm not quite sure what happened there. It's all been primed. I wonder whether I've um, put a greasy hand on there uh, before I've put the uh, paint on or what, but it's certainly not stuck um, in that corner. Uh, and also on the sides of the unit, uh, hopefully you can see that, I've got some run marks. Um, and I think that's because I made the paint too runny. Um, it is overall quite smooth in places. I'm quite finished with, I'm quite pleased with the sort of first coat finish in places, but overall, yeah, could be better. Um, and on the drawer front, um, I've got a bit of bobbling uh, when I think some, uh, either some dust has got in the paint um, or maybe a bit too much water. So what I'm gonna do is give everything a 220 sand uh, or sand with some 220 gr um, grit sandpaper um, and then respray. If I have to do like another coat, not really bothered, um, but that's what I'm going to do now. Just get that sanded back and respray it. 
So with this sanding, I'm not looking to remove the paint, just uh, effectively denib, get any of the sort of lumps and bub bubbles out um, before I put a new uh, coat of paint on. Remembering to um, wipe off any sort of dust in between, and then I can get the sprayer out again and give it a good coat. Once the drawers are dry, I can put some handles on. Now I did mention earlier that I was gonna make some, but actually when I was in B&Q buying some wood, uh, I saw some handles I really liked, so I just purchased them. Maybe a little bit more expensive, but uh, saved me a bit of time. So I've just knocked up a little jig, which allows me to um, drill the holes in the same place every time. Um, and I could then get those uh, screwed on. For the base, uh, of the tester drawers, I'm using some 18 mil by 70 mil pine, um, and I'm just cutting that to the uh, width and depth of the tester drawers, but leaving um, enough room to put some legs on. And for the legs, I'm using some 40 mil square uh, pine again, and I'm cutting those to about six inches eventually. But what I've done is make some 12 inch. Um, 12 inch cuts put a angle of about five degrees on either end and then cut them in half to join the base together i'm just using my pocket hole jig um it's really simple you won't see these uh pocket holes once the uh unit is on so just connecting the legs to the sides to make the base Once the base was all uh, glued and screwed together, um, I could give it a stain. Um, I could have painted this, but I chose to go for a stain just to give it a bit of contrast. And I'm using a dark walnut by Little Friars. Um, it's a water-based stain. Um, and yeah, really, really happy with that product. And to attach the base uh, to the chest of drawers, I'm just using some uh, brackets, some, some metal brackets, which I'm just screwing onto the base. Uh, before screwing the base onto the chest of drawers and that is essentially uh, it. That is the final thing to do is give everything a coat of finishing wax. I'm just using the Rust-Oleum uh, finishing wax because that's what it suggests for the paint that I chose. Um, I'm giving that a rub on, letting it dry for a bit and buffing it off and that is chest of drawers complete. So there we have it. That was um, a bit of a chest of drawers uh, makeover. Um, in terms of cost, uh, I spent £15 on paint uh, for the top coat. I spent about £15 on wood uh, for the base and I spent about £20 on handles. Uh, so overall around £50 in materials. Uh, the Zins are bin uh, and the sanding discs and things like that I consider to be uh, consumables and I hold it out in my shed so I'm not adding that to the cost but obviously if you were doing this and you had, didn't have any of those things you would have to spend that money as well so yeah around 50 quid for an update uh, which I'm really pleased with so all I have to do is celebrate with a beer and today I've got a Yes Sir I Can Boogie forklift truck mango pale ale Ooh, that does taste a mango. Remember, you stay safe, get some stuff done. <laughs>